Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio. I'm going to show in this video uh, another segmentation. Okay, so that's the process where you take the DICOM data of the patient and you actually turn that into an STL. If we're going to do a bone supported guide, then we need a good solid STL to build that on. And so in segmentation, we go ahead and do that process. And what I'll show here is somewhat of a hybrid workflow. I utilize some mesh mixer to really expedite the process. So to start this process, what I'm going to do is go to the surfaces panel, choose my original CT here, and I'm going to use the cut tool. And I'm going to cut away a lot of this uh, data that I don't really need because I want to minimize how much of uh, the uh, jaw I need to segment. And really only the portion of the crest where I'm going to have a guide is of importance to me. So with that cut done, you can now see that this maxilla has been detached from uh, the rest of this and so you could go ahead and continue to cut that away or once you've separated it you could hit isolate and now just click on that maxilla all right so here we see the maxilla turn these implants and nerves off now if you were to look at this you're going to see that it's very porous all right and so there's two things I'm going to do here. I'm going to do a segmentation model, but I also want to make a model where I just hit this, which is create model. And all that's going to do is just turn exactly what you see right here into an STL. Now with it uh, missing so much, I'm going to play with the density here and see if I can get a little bit more bone to appear. All right. Now I don't want to go too much. And the way I can verify that is by turning on the hint. And if I look at this hint now, I can see that that little change that I just made actually went slightly in excess of where the bone really is. Uh, you could see here if I went ahead and turned the density back up, that that will alter the way this model outline looks. OK, so I do want it to go a little bit outside, just about like that. And so with that done, what I'll do here is hit create model. Let's make this pink so you can see it a little better. So this is an STL. However, as a standalone STL, it's not really acceptable for building a guide on because there's so much porosity. I mean, imagine you have an implant right here, then your guide is going to drop down and build to the first STL surface it comes in contact with. Well, here that would be in the superior surface of the sinus. So that alone is not going to be sufficient. And so what we'll need to do now is go ahead and do a segmentation. You'll see why I created this here in a moment. Um, essentially, what I'm going to do is create two models, combine them together where we get the best of both models. OK, and the maxilla is pretty difficult to segment because of all this porosity. It's much more difficult than a mandible. So now let's go ahead and do the segmentation. I'm going to start that by expanding the field of view right here because I want to pick up as much data as possible about that maxilla in these slices when I do the segmentation. So get a wide focal trough like this. And now I'm going to hit advanced jaw segmentation. And I'm going to indicate the jaw. Uh, this starts a wizard process. Now, we don't need to do the entire jaw. I don't really care if I get the nasal spines and these lateral sinus walls or any of that kind of stuff. I really just want the crest. And so when I'm defining with this box where I want to uh, segment, I'm not going all the way up into the orbits or any of that stuff. I'm just focused on the crest here. OK, and by not doing an excessively large area, it's going to cut down on how many slices we have to define. And I'm also going to keep this hint, the model hint on to help me identify uh, where that bone is. It just gives you a little visual confirmation. So you see here there's a uh, lighter outline. This reflects that focal trough that I expanded earlier. And the only bone I see in this slice is right here. So we're going to use the tool called Intelligent Lasso. And with Intelligent Lasso, what I can do is uh, set a density amount. And when I hold shift and encircle that, anything of the density 600 or higher, it's going to say is bone. And you see here how it turned that pink. Uh, now, I'm going to go a little lower with that and see if we can pick up slightly more, maybe even down to 400. I want to kind of do this until I start noticing that it's picking up noise. OK, now you see how that we know this is not bone. And so I'm going to undo that and we'll go back up to 400. That looks like the, the depth at which I need to or the uh, 
density at which I need to do this. So you see here 12 slices it wants us to do. I'm going to go ahead and do the next. And in each slice, we're just going to repeat that process. We've got to define for the software what is bone and what is not. Okay. So like this is a great example slice. You see here that um, the minimum density uh, allows us to turn all this pink, but this is where segmentation comes in is that we've got to define for the software in the slice that, hey, also this is bone. So you've got multiple tools here. You could use your brush tool and you could brush that in. For big areas, I like to use this lasso tool. And so I'm gonna go ahead and outline and once you have a continuous boundary around it, like you see how all this area is enclosed, you can hit fill holes and it will fill all that in, it makes your work a lot easier. And so I'm gonna continue here defining in this slice what's bone and what's not. Now, if you're going to air, you ought to air towards including stuff rather than leaving it out. Like, here, I'm not sure if that's bone or not, but I would rather err towards including it as to not because, you know, if you miss a spicula bone and it actually is there in the mouth, then that's going to mean your guide doesn't fit. You're now trying to chase down a prematurity and fix that, and you don't want to have to do that. Whereas, if let's say that you filled in an area and you called it bone when it's really not, well, that's not a big deal. It's just going to make a little gap under your guide, but it won't inhibit the seating of that guide. Okay. Fill holes again, go to the next slice. And we're just going to repeat this process through all of the slices that the wizard takes us through. So I'm going to time lapse this uh, so that you can see it better. But real quick, before I do that, I want to show you one other thing. Now, if you don't care about, you know, closing the sinuses in, then probably the easiest thing is uh, like here, you know, this is all sinus, that's all air. And so if I just wanted to, um, you know, worry about the crest, then I could just enclose around this to where it's got a continuous boundary and then hit fill holes. And there you see it fills that in. But in this case, let's go ahead and try to uh, maintain that, uh, that sinus as a space and not have that filled in. So what I can do here is I just removed a little bit. Now I can hit fill holes, get all of that filled in, and then I'm going to use the lasso and just specifically define here around that sinus. And oh, I'm still on remove instead of add. And let's use the brush to reclose that little area. Next. Okay, so now I'll time lapse this and uh, I'll show you the last steps towards the end of the video. And now you see that it switches over to some cross sectional views. This again is where if earlier, if you hadn't stretched out that field of view, that focal trough, then you might end up cutting some area off here. And so we want to make sure that that's wide. So exact same thing. And notice again, I'm not trying to capture all of that. It looks like that other model got this. I'm only going to do the lighter area as indicated uh, in this middle slice. So intelligent lasso, outline it, and then use your lasso and fill in whatever was missed. And next, and I'll time lapse these as well. All right, this is the 12th and final slice in the wizard that it's led me through. But what I'm going to do is once I get these done, I'm going to go ahead and go back and add just a few more slices. So even though the wizard is only taking you through a minimum number, that's not to say that you can't do more. I mean, for example, if I just take my scroll ball, I can scroll through the CT and look at different slices and I could add more segmentation there. So I could do another one here. Now, the place where I really want to focus on doing this and adding more slices 
is in the very areas that were missed by that previous model that I made. So you remember back here in this crest, as you see, just a standard density reading, it's not getting that area to pick up. And so I'm gonna add some to that. Um, I find it easier though, when I'm gonna do my additional slices to go into the NPR view. So go to view, perspectives, NPR. And these are the views that I like to deal with right here. So with this, I can now look and see both sides in cross section simultaneously, as opposed to just a single jaw, because it's easier in my opinion to do both at the same time rather than individual uh, sides one at a time. So close that in. Close that in. See how this area I missed? I want to make sure to include that. And let's go ahead and scroll through some more and find the areas where I know I might have some problems. And this can be helped by looking at where your implants actually are. So you might not need to spend a lot of time doing back here in the pterygoid area if there's no implants back there. But having that implant on, I can see that this is very close in proximity to an area where an implant is. So I'm going to add more slices back here. And then also, let's hide those implants again. Also, I want to define more slices right at the crest of ridge. Okay, so remember the crest is where you probably got real poor quality bone, maybe old extraction sockets. If there's an area you're probably going to miss in your segmentation, it's most likely to be right there on that crest. And so this is where I want to go in and do some additional slices. And like I'm looking at this, to me, I wasn't sure if that was bone or not. But again, if I'm going to err, I'm going to err towards including that rather than not. Same thing with this little area. And right here. Okay, so we've done that. I, I really probably think I need to do more, but I wanna show you how to deal with it if you've missed some. So I'm just gonna proceed forward, click next, and it's going to begin. It'll, it'll make you go through these. All you gotta do is just click through these. These are your additional slices that you did uh, beyond what the wizard intended. So let's let this think for a second and it's gonna perform the segmentation. Okay, so the software is finished thinking and you can see now the segmentation. And what we can do is uh, scroll through here because all of that red, that is what the, the software uh, performed the segmentation. And that is the, the area that has been segmented. And I do see that I've got a little missed area right here. Okay. Got some missed areas here. And again, you can just see because of this maxilla, there's so much areas of non-dense bone that it just misses stuff, okay? And I see that my other model picked up some of that, but still not all of it. Now, rather than starting a whole new segmentation, I need to just go back in by clicking previous, but I need to see the areas where it missed. And so this is why I wanted to show this on a maxilla. The way I'll do that is I'm gonna hit create a surface and it's going to turn all of that pink into a surface. And that way I can leave its model outline on and then go back to the previous steps, but still see where that segmentation uh, performed this. OK, so now the model outline of that is turned on and in segmentation. Now I'm going to go back and click previous. And now I'm gonna go looking for the areas that were missed. So you see this area? This time I'm gonna add another slice to define that. I want to turn off that pink model outline because this will uh, this will be a little bit easier to see. Now here, there's a bunch missed in this slice, so 
let's go back in and really fill those in. Okay, so as you see here, I've gone back and added a whole bunch of slices, and in particular, I've, I've focused on these areas where it missed it. Because again, if, if if in the anterior area, if it already got anything, why would I go back and define any more slices there? So here I've, I've tried to add that, and I'm going to let this process again and do a, another segmentation with the additional data I've given it, and we'll check it out. All right, so let's now look at the modified one. <clears throat> if we scroll through here now i can see that you know the white outline was my previous segmentation now you see that the pink includes that area that had been missed and so this to me is looking a lot better so what i'm going to do is go ahead and finish out the process now so i'm going to hit create surface first of all let's delete that old one and now i'm going to create surface And so you still see that there's areas where the, the new white segmentation model got it and the pink one didn't, but there's some areas like right here on the crest where the pink one got it and the white one didn't. So we'll combine the best of both of those. I'll do that by going to File, Export Data, and we're going to export both of those models simultaneously. Now, whatever you've got visible in your 3D screen, that's what will be checked on. So I'm going to just hit Export. And what I'll do is just open that now in Mesh Mixer. And so the step that I'll do here in Mesh Mixer is to combine these into one single water type model. Because even though they're a single STL right now, it's an STL made up of two independent face groups. We want just a single water type exterior with no porosity inside. And so I'll do that by going ahead and making solid with both of these models here. Now, when you do this, it's going to give you an initial proposal, which is going to lose a lot of details. So you want to change your solid type from fast up to accurate. You want to take your solid accuracy, maximize it to the very end, and then mesh density, I usually take about halfway, and then update. And now you see that by doing that, it uh, has a lot more detail to this model. So I'll accept that. And then last step before we just finalize the segmentation, I want to run the analysis and fix any holes. See, there's some holes here, let's repair them all. And now this is done. And I'm gonna export it again. And now to finally do this, let's bring it back into Blue Sky. So import STL. Anytime you import an STL, this window is going to come up. However, this is already globally positioned in the right spot. So just cancel here. Don't go through the stitching process. And now let's go ahead and look at the final segmentation. So if you remember the original bone model had some missing areas. You see like right there where it missed it. And uh, it just got a little spotty in certain areas. And then by the same token, this model, it was full of porosity. That one's not going to cut it. So now let's look at this newest one as a standalone. This one captures the best of both models. You see here, like that area where it missed, it captured that. So at this point, we're done. And we could clear this segmentation data. Get rid of all that paint because it kind of obscures your view and now you're ready to proceed with any kind of a bone supported guide that you wanted to do so this was one of the more difficult cases i've ever done as far as segmentation and i'm a little under 30 minutes on this so the maxilla can be somewhat tedious 
Um, you know, it's definitely not a bad idea if you don't want to have that hassle just to outsource this to labpronto.com and you can just pay them to do the segmentation. But, you know, if you got the time and you just want to do it, uh, this is how I would do it. And it's, you know, still a, a little investment of time, but it's a lot quicker than if you had to purely rely on the segmentation uh, panel and you had to go through and do like 100 slices. This is still much faster than that. So I hope you found that helpful.